All right, good afternoon. Here we are yet again for another lovely session of ENGR 2302 Engineering Dynamics. This is the ninth uh, lecture in the video series, and today we'll be continuing on for some uh, material from chapter, some more material from chapter 14 of the Beerbacter Mechanics book. All right, so last time we started looking at systems of particles and uh, conservation uh, in within systems of particles. Namely, we looked at conservation of momentum, and linear and angular momentum in um, systems of particles. We're not at um, rigid bodies yet, but we're looking at systems of particles and eventually we'll be moving on to rigid bodies, oh, perhaps starting next week. So I want to work through one example of, of working through some of these topics of, um, of conservation momentum for uh, systems of particles, and then I want to move on to, oh, something on uh, conservation of energy, impulse momentum, and some other things. Okay, so let me work through an example. So an example. So we have a 20-pound uh, particle um, is moving at a velocity of 200 meters per second, or sorry, 100 feet per second. A 20-pound object. moves at uh, 100 feet per second feet per second um, when it explodes or ruptures explodes into a five pound piece and a 15 pound piece pound piece and a 15 pound piece Uh, immediately after fracture, immediately after fracture, the pieces are moving at uh, certain angles, which I'll provide. The pieces are moving at an angle, uh, are moving at theta A, at theta A, equals 45 degrees and theta B equals 30 degrees. 45 degrees and 30 degrees. So um, initially we have an object that is 20 pounds moving at uh, 100 feet per second. Then um, we'll have a fracture at some point so I'll just sort of draw the path. This is going like this. It was going horizontally to the right, although it really wouldn't, since we're just looking at the velocities, it ultimately wouldn't matter what direction it was going as long as we just are consistent. And then it goes to the two pieces go off like this, where this is an angle of uh, theta A is um, 45 degrees, and this is 30 degrees. This is theta A and this is theta b, theta a and theta b. Uh, then, and I will say, I will label a couple of things. We have one object that will be, that I'll call object a and object b here. And these will have va and vb, as that makes perfect sense. Velocity of a, and velocity of b, vb. Okay, so I'm going to solve this problem using the conservation of linear momentum. Okay, so let us work through that. Any questions on this uh, setup? Basically, I'm going to look at the conservation of momentum in both the x and the y direction. So the first thing to realize is that since there are no external forces, the linear momentum of the system will be conserved. Since there are no external forces, uh, forces, linear momentum is conserved. Uh, linear momentum is conserved. Thus, um, 
so um, essentially like this. If I say, I could say MA, um, actually let me label this as perhaps V naught for the initial velocity. Uh, v naught being the initial velocity of the thing. So um, a conservation momentum would say something like this. I would have, well, my initial velocity um, or initial momentum. So it would be all, it would all be based off of the, um, the conservation of linear momentum. So um, mv naught vector would be equal to mava vector plus mb vb vector. Uh, so then the masses, I would have something, I would need to use the masses here. So oh, actually, if we notice here, this is based on mass and not on force. So I'd have to actually convert my forces, my weights to masses. So I would have, um, for the initial mass, uh, it would be 20 over G. And this G would be, um, would not be 9.8, it would be my, um, my English unit G. But we can see actually in this case, it's just going to cancel out. Is equal to um, MA, which is going to be 5 over G times VA, plus uh, 15 over G, which is MB, times VB. Now, notice though, this is still a vector equation. So um, it's not necessarily completely useful yet, because I need to, I would like to look at this in terms of both, um, I would like to look at this in terms of actual components. See, this is a vector equation. Vector equation. Three unknown, or sorry, two unknowns. Difficult to solve by itself. So this is very difficult to solve by itself. Instead, I'm going to look at the components. So the x component, the x component, if I look at just the x component of each of these, I would have, well, initially all of the momentum is in the x direction, so I can just say 20 times 100. I'm going to ignore the g, because clearly the g will simply cancel out if I, divide, if I multiply across by g. So 20 times 200 equals 5VA uh, times 45, cosine 45 degrees, uh, cosine 45 degrees, plus 15 VB times the cosine of 30 degrees. All right, and then the Y component, the Y component, I will have, well, zero, that is my initial, see, I initially have no momentum in the Y direction, which means the total Y momentum on the, on the uh, after the, the explosion must be zero. So 5VA times the sine of 45 degrees minus, now we do make sure we get our minus in there because it's going downward for particle B, 15VB times the sine of 30 degrees. And now I have two equations, 200 equals uh, 5VA cosine 45 degrees plus 15VB times the cosine of 30 degrees. And if I solve this system of equations, it's just a simple linear system, very trivial to solve. I can get that VA is equal to 207 feet per second. And that VB is equal to 97.6 feet per second. 97.6 feet per second. All right, and we could do um, something similar for more complicated systems, but that is the general idea. All right, questions on that? Um, questions on that? Um, maybe similar to a test question. I, uh, what I do, to, uh, uh, what I do try to put on uh, test questions. Uh, you never know, but I try to select problems or put on problems that can be solved. You know, in something other than you know multiple pages of uh, of uh, work because it is time limited. So yeah, something like this is a maybe uh, about maybe throw a force in there. Who knows? Something like that might be good. You never know. Yes. So the G is not 9.8. Uh, it would be thirty-two point two feet per second squared, I believe. 
Um, the geode should be 32.2 feet per second, I believe. Let's see, if we wanted to, that would go for, well, at least that would take us to slugs. That would take us from pound force to slugs. Um, you could also use pound mass, but let's not worry about such things. So um, uh, I could do, I would just call it, by dividing by 32.2, you would go from uh, pound force to slugs. All right, and let me stop there.